Good evening, everybody. I know everybody's in mute only, so that's why nobody's answering, but I know you're all saying hello and good evening. Um, this is Maria da Rua. I'm uh, the executive assistant to the CEO, Jan Barker, and happy to have you all here tonight. We have some amazing volunteers here in Kalamazoo, so um, we'll and of course, Jen is here, some staff is here as well. So with that, I just wanted to mention real quick that um, as I mentioned already, that everybody is muted automatically. Um, if you want to um, ask a question, you can do it in the chat box or you can raise your hand, a little tiny hand in the, on, the, on your um, screen. Uh, but chat really works perfect. I'll be looking at those through the uh, webinar and um, sharing those questions with Jen, and we'll answer them as we go over when we make a, a stop at some point. So with that, I will just pass it on to uh, Jan Barker. Good evening and welcome, and thank you for joining us this evening. As Mariella said, I'm Jan Barker, CEO of Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan, and that is truly an honor for me to be able to serve you and work with our incredible staff. So it's also my pleasure tonight to share with you our 2018-2019 successes and also share what some of the adventures that are in store as we look towards the future. Um, Mariella already reminded you that everyone's muted, but please, if you have rave reviews and you'd like to comment, those are welcome. If you have questions, type your question in and raise the tiny, tiny hand in the toolbox. And we can also um, unmute you and you can ask your question live. So you can either type your question or ask it live. And I will go through a couple slides and pause and ask your questions then. And then we'll open the mic at the end of the webinar as well for additional questions or feedback. So thank you so much again for everything that you do for Girl Scouts and especially for being here this evening. So this is our town hall. It's really a way to let our members um, and involve our members in our successes and awareness of just what's happening in, in your Girl Scout Council for all the volunteers, the parents, the families, and the girls. During the 2018-2019 membership year, and of course that starts October 1st and ends September 30th, our membership decreased by over 600 girls, meaning a decrease in girl members of 3.5. Um, however, we did have a 7.5% market share um, last year, so that's quite high and higher than the national average, but of course, that combined with the loss of girls is not a good thing. I have some very good news in that this year we have um, seen real growth in girl members and we are up over a thousand girls strong. So we were able to turn that around and that's a testimony to our continuous improvement and the very hard work of the area managers who have helped us build a strong foundation. Um, this year, that past year in 2018-2019, we did have the area managers and the facilitators. I will share that GSUSA has made a decision that they will be calling facilitators trainers once more. So we're going back to that name, but in 2018 we called them facilitators. So just get ready, you're going to be called trainers, facilitators. So we did work um, to strengthen the partnership for recruitment and retention of girl members and adult volunteers. Um, during the Area Manager Summit in Lansing, all of the teams worked in breakout groups and I heard rave reviews about the summit. We broke out to address subjects, everything from marketing to recruitment to new leader support. And um, during the 2018-2019 year, out of our 93 geographic areas, we only had 27 that were in need of area managers. And I don't have to share with you the fact that if you have an area manager, that is the number one reason and the number one predictor of girl growth, 
of increase in membership and increase in volunteers. So I would like to thank um, the amazing area managers that built the foundation for us to be able to leap towards growth this year. So our Jackson um, area managers, I have exciting news in that um, we really call you VIPs. You can see we have our Kalamazoo. Thank you so much, Jackson and Kalamazoo, for being area managers. Our Lansing area manager, please take a look at all those amazing names on there. And then, of course, Saginaw. I want to thank each and every one of you for the time and attention that you put into being an area manager. And of course, uh, certainly, Ipsy, Ann Arbor, look at all those fabulous area managers. Now, I do have an exciting announcement in that um, we will also be changing the name of area managers to service unit managers so we can be consistent with what GSUSA is, is doing. So you can mark that down. That's new news. So if you take that back and share it with your team, that would be great. A lot of our database uses the terminology of service unit. We're the only council in the nation that uses the word area, so we are going to convert to that. So I'm hoping everybody will be able to get used to the rename and also know that it's, we continue to hold you in high esteem regardless of what we call you. We call you VIP service unit managers now. I want to remind everybody that like the girl in this picture, that's why we're here. We're here because Girl Scouts assures a girl of success. Clearly, they shine above their peers in leadership, academics, career aspirations, and their picture of a positive possible future for themselves and the people around them. And we know with the 15 competencies, the 15 outcomes, that Girl Scouts exhibit much stronger leadership excuse me, leadership competencies than non-Girl Scouts. And the reason that we're all here in this united, amazing um, group of 17,000, more than 17,000 members is for the girl and her growth and development. So we had 21 areas that met their girl goal and 40 areas that met their adult goal, goal. So I want to say congratulations to all those areas that met their girl and adult goal. We also had a girl retention rate of 55.8. And here's what we know about girl retention. A girl is likely to stay in Girl Scouting if she has a fabulous troop leader. That is the number one factor that determines a girl stays in Girl Scouting. So it's absolutely critical. Thank you, area managers, for coaching your teams, and thank you, leaders, for doing amazing things. Also, thank you, smart parents who know that one of the best decisions they can make for their girl is that she stays in Girl Scouts. I do want to share that in addition to our classic troop girls, our numbers include girls from outreach. Last year, we served 2,255 girls through our outreach program. Um, and I will tell you, in Saginaw, 600 girls were served during the summer, either in 20 summer sites or at camp. 100 girls from the outreach program went to camp, and many of these girls had not been further from their home than a school bus trip to their school. The girls all went hiking, boating, horse, horsing, horse riding horses. <laughs> Maybe they were horsing around, I don't know, probably a little. Swimming. They got to make and eat s'mores, and who doesn't love that? They learned archery, and they really built their self-reliance and confidence by climbing the climbing wall. So um, many of the girls reported that on their last day, they just wanted to stay longer, and that's a success. In Lansing, we had 448 girls served through our outreach program. And I want to say a special thank you to all our people that come to Bake Off, because that supports our outreach person, and all the people, all the fund development team that raises money. And I want to thank the donors that are on the call with us that have given money, because many of these girls cannot afford Girl Scouting otherwise. 
girls, the girls in Lansing did do a camp day with Jackson's girls at Camp of the Hills in beautiful Brooklyn on Pink Street. And the IPSI Ann Arbor outreach total for the year was 330 girls. And the outreach girls from Kalamazoo went to Camp Marywood where they did archery. They met the horses and they also got to climb on a climbing wall. There were a total of 313 girls registered for outreach and 93 girls from Battle Creek. That's amazing. Jackson Outreach Department served 181 of those 2,255 2, girls. So congratulations for being part of an organization that wants to make Girl Scouting available for everyone. And then, of course, the heartbeat, the people that we went to the dance with and we remember to come home with are our incredible volunteers. This year, 60 plus volunteers were recognized. Um, we had a slate of nominees that received national level awards like the appreciation pin, the honor pin, the green heart pin, the thanks badge, and the thanks badge too. We recognized our area managers soon to be called service unit managers, our area product managers, our facilitators, soon to be called trainers, day camp directors, Catholic committee members, award committee members, board members, member advisory committee volunteers. Thank you, thank you, thank you MAC members um, for giving us feedback. Thank you also to every uh, one of our MAC member volunteers. And thank you also to um, Allison for leading our, our MAC committee. Uh, we also acknowledged our Gold Award advisors and all of those volunteers that had 25 or more years of service to Girl Scouts. 30 award recipients were present and more than 100 people attended the luncheon in Lansing. It was very fun and it's always so enjoyable to see everyone because we are spread out across 34 counties. GSHOM girls that earned their gold award. We were actually up this year. It's very exciting and it's growing. So our hope is to grow the gold award, elevate the awareness of our gold, silver, and bronze awards, and know that 108 girls earned their silver, 39 earned their gold, and 132 earned their bronze. Um, and in May, we held a girl recognition ceremony and of course, the gold award is the highest, the highest award a Girl Scout can receive. Um, I'm asking everybody to talk about the gold award. The Girl Scout gold award is indeed um, in the shadows of um, that other award um, that the boys earn. And so we really need to talk about the gold award so that we can build girl equity um, and get the acclaim and the um, the accolades that girls who gain the Girl Scout Gold Award do get. So way to go girls. We're going to have hopefully even more this year. I, um, in, Mariella included some beautiful pictures of our, some of our girls who got their awards and photos from the ceremony, from the award ceremony um, this past year. Aren't they beautiful? That's why we do what we do. It's so rewarding. You hear those girls tell the story, and I have to call out our fabulous board chair who um, raves about how she heard the meaning. Um, she really felt the meaning of Girl Scouting, and when she attends the Gold Award, it just touches her heart and soul to see the kind of, the kind of impact, the kind of benefit, and the kind of stories that the girls tell about their experience. So I know Kate's with us on the phone tonight, and I would like to um, um, thank her um, for really advocating for the Gold Award. And you'll also see in that upper right-hand corner is Barb Hinton, um, who is also our board member who is there presenting awards to our Gold Award. So congratulations, girls, and thank you, fabulous board members who take the time to come to our Gold Award ceremony. Now, you know, we're, in the, we're the experts at Girls in the Out of Doors, and this number is quite impressive. Um, 11,333 program participants participated in outdoor activities at our camps. 621 overnight campers and 641 day campers. It's amazing. 
Um, we had 8,313 girls participated in our classic programs, those listed in our beautiful source book. And some of you may not be aware, but we do produce that here locally. And there are not um, a lot of councils all across the nation who have such a beautiful uh, collection of programs published in um, a source. So that is something that I think we celebrate. Um, we also have a total of um, 4,967 adult and children that were served through our outdoor programs. Oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. 11,333 are total program participants. And of that, 8,313 are classic programs and 4,967, which is pretty close to 9,000, were outdoor program girls. We continue to stress our go outside and come back better. I urge you, if you haven't read um, Let Them Be Eaten by Bears and all the advantages of Having girls in the out of doors in a, in a single gender environment, it is a powerfully amazing environment and experience for girls. And what's wonderful is we saw an increase in outdoor participation. Um, and this year, just imagine how many more girls we're gonna have. We have an outstanding program um, and staff and camp staff. I urge any of you at your area meetings, at your service unit meetings, to please invite any of our camp directors or our program team to come and talk about all our amazing classic programs and outdoor programs. Once they meet our amazing um, program and outdoor program staff and our camp directors, those girls will want to go and the parents will feel assured what a safe, amazing adventure it is. We had a beautiful, um, uh, Camp brochure come out early, and we this is the first year we've had people buy camp experiences for their daughters, granddaughters, nieces, and friends. We have girls coming from out of state already registered. So please take a look. Everyone should have gotten their beautiful summer overnight camp for all girls book, and it has been mailed. We do have extra copies available at our regional centers, and if you'd like to position several copies at your dentist or doctor's office or share some with a girl that you know, please do that. Early registration ends February 1st. Actually, I'm sorry, it is February 15th. Oh, 15th. It's a typo, so. Oh, February 15th. Right. Oh, we missed that one. It actually says right on the camp guide, February 15th. February 15th. So, 15th. I missed like eight that five. <laughs> yeah, it's a test. Yeah, a lot more time. To yes, learn. so we should have even more girls going to camp. So please. I have talked to several leaders who said, you know, our girls never registered for overnight camp in the summer. They always went troop camping. And I really encourage you to, to do both. Um, get your girls to summer camp. And participate in those program activities, please. Any questions so far that relate to what we've talked about? Uh, we have a comment that we're glad to, that facilitators will become trainers again. Oh, yay. So, yes. Um, and then it's just uh, the typo of that I, that I said, well, the early registration is February 15th, but then there is another comment. Um, that they've met our camp staff um, and they can't believe how amazing they are. <laughs> Or they were just at the mall event and they saw a really cool program staff. Uh, it seems that there's an ad, um, a GSUSA ad that has been run in Lansing, Gold Award, the mark of the truly remarkable. Oh, that's wonderful. That's running, so uh, that's a comment by uh, staff members. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you. That's it for now. So the, uh, the next success that I'd like to focus on is that we have an astounding fund development team that in the past year raised um, a little over a million dollars for those girls that can't afford Girl Scouting. Um, they also use this money, we use this money within the council to subsidize camp. That's why camp is such a reasonable dollar amount with camper shifts and scholarships um, and outreach funding. So it is quite amazing when you think that we have a team that raises money to um, augment what we're able to do and offer and program and um, troop camping and troops um, of more than a million dollars. So thank you, fund development team. And part of that 
211000 pretty much $212,000, was um, raised at special events, our beautiful bake-offs, and then close to 300000 is raised by direct contribution. Um, so at each of our regions, we have a bake-off or a barbecue. And please, I encourage you to invite people. Our next barbecue, our next bake offs coming up in Kalamazoo on February 26th. And following that, we'll have one in Ipsy Ann Arbor, or really Ann Arbor. So if you haven't been to a bake off or a barbecue, I certainly urge you to come and help support girls. It is, I am told by many people in the communities that they are the best activities in the community. So join us for Bake Off. Here are some delicious, in, inspiring treats that will um, tempt you to come this year. So please, read your newsletter, go to a Bake Off near you. I will advise you it is an adult event because there are adult beverages served there. And um, it's really for people that um, want some elbow exercise so they can raise their paddle and bid on desserts and all the marvelous things in the silent auction. Next, I want to share that we have one of the most outstanding cookie programs in the nation. Um, our cookie product team is tiny but mighty, and our, um, our product program officer is renowned within the nation for her knowledge of, um, of cookies and the product program and the benefits that it gives to girls. So we made 92.2% of our cookie goal I will tell you the reason, the number one reason why we didn't make 120% was we were down 600 girls. There's a direct correlation with that number. Although we also had a dollar increase per package, which does um, sort of stymie purchases sometimes. So in a price increase year, we um, do anticipate the number of packages sold would be lower, and that did hold true. Um, however, the per girl average of packages sold was 135 boxes per girl. And get this, all run by volunteers and a mighty tiny staff, we sold 1,596,927,000 boxes of cookies in this council last year. It is an amazing machine. And so I'll share with you, here are the cookie goals. So you can see, yay, Jackson. They are also tiny but mighty. They went up and over their goal. You can see next is Saginaw, yay, yay, yay. Um, we do have a percent persist, a girl participation of 77.6. And we did have 14,102 girls registered. Um, during the cookie season last year with 10,854 participating. But you can see in rank order Jackson, Saginaw, Lansing, Ipsy, and Kalamazoo. Congratulations to you top achievers. And we do have, if you haven't felt it in the council, we have a healthy competition from region to region. So I hope that volunteers, leaders, and girls want to join in that fun. I'd like to Send a special thank you to our product program managers. It is one of our largest volunteer bases, and they are some um, VIPs as well. So here are the program managers in alpha order. Thank you to each of you for everything that you do to raise the money so that we can teach girls the five skills, which is so important. Um, that they, it's their first entrepreneurial experience. It's part of the amazing benefit of Girl Scouting, and it is really who we, who we are. Um, everyone knows Girl Scouts by the fabulous boxes of cookies. What they don't know is how it broadens a girl's world. It teaches them essential business skills, launches them into a lifetime of meaning, of um, leadership. And many people see it as a box of cookies. We see it as amazing experiences for girl. And the nice thing is, all the proceeds stay local. That means you're not only supporting a girl's success, 
but the success of your community when a troop decides that they're going to make the world a better place and do a service project, all while helping build the next generation of female entrepreneurs. We are so proud of them. Cookies help girls do great things at the troop level and also support the council level so we can, as a whole, do great things for girls. And to reiterate, those skills that girls learn, and um, you know, it was wonderful. I just had a dialogue with someone who said, you know, the girls asked me, would you like to buy Girl Scout cookies? And then they said, would you like to know what my goal is? So, um, yes, thank you leaders for reinforcing those five skills. It's so important. The foundation of our cookie program and our product program is built on the essential skills of entrepreneurship that girls, that girls learn. And as a part of that, the troops actually made a million three hundred and four thousand eight hundred and five dollars in troop proceeds that go on to do good things. Just imagine all the things girls are able to do with their troops with that amount of money for her community and her Girl Scout learning adventure. Thank you girls for your enthusiasm. Thank you parents. Thank you product volunteers and everyone that's involved in helping a girl learn to be a smart businesswoman. In addition to that, we give back to the community. Last year, we gave back to the community through Hometown Heroes, 28,046 boxes were donated um, to hospitals, homeless shelters, food pantries, veterans hospitals, veterans organizations, police, fire, EMS units, and military units serving both statewide and abroad. And you can see this is Troop 30445. They gave Girl Scout cookies to volunteer drivers of the Shiawassee County Veterans Office for Hometown Heroes. These volunteers give their time driving veterans to their appointments, and they share their stories with the Girl Scouts on why they love volunteering. And everyone needs to remember that you live longer when you volunteer. That's real hard research. So keep volunteering. The transportation coordinator, Paula Yeager, um, explained how people can volunteer on their schedule. Just a few hours a month could make all the difference in a veteran's life. And they can even supply the vehicle and the gas. So way to go, girls. This is a tiny example. Um, of girls doing amazing big things. And it's a tiny example because this is one troop, and you imagine you multiply that by over 6,000 troops doing similar things. So thank you, amazing volunteers, and for all those people that take care of our veterans. So I also want to share a little bit about Treats and Reads. Treats and Reads continues to grow. Um, this, we made 103% we're pretty close, 103.7% of our budget goal last year, and you think that's quite an achievement considering we were down in girls. So um, you can see the dollar amount that we did raise in Treats and Reads, and I'm hoping everyone really promotes Treats and Reads as we move forward into the uh, coming year. I'd love to share, here's how our region stacked up, and Saginaw, I mean, uh, Lansing, uh, was just trailing behind Jackson. So once more, Jackson excelled at um, their Treats and Reads product program goal with Lansing close behind, Saginaw, Kalamazoo, and Ipsy. And uh, I will share this is a troop in Pawpaw at the family fair that I got to meet. So um, it's so exciting when we see all of our girls out selling and a lot of our staff will actually make the rounds on first couple weekends of booths just to go see how many booths they can visit and thank the girls and the leaders. And this was one I got to pers personally thank. I'd like to share that our online sales are up $3,550. Um, we were down about 2,500 tickets council-wide last year. So our foot traffic was not so great. Online sales are taking away some business from our foot traffic. 
So could you please remind your parents, your grandparents, your leaders that we have these fabulous retail stores and shop local and because when you buy from our retail stores, all that money stays right here to support girls. Um, so come in, shop, and uh, the retail goal is $288,000, and that includes our trading posts, our traveling stores, um, your, your retail staff will come out to your area meetings, your service unit meetings, and you can also shop online. All of the revenue when you do shop online now does return to our council. However, some of those council items that we do get a little bit bigger market share, many of them are not online and our staff in our retail stores are amazing and prepared to help parents and leaders um, know what they can do to become a better leader, know how to arrange badges and on the badge sash or vest. They are amazing, amazing resources. So you're missing a lot of fun and a lot of learning um, when you miss out and don't come to the retail store. So please come in and shop and thank you so much for that staff um, that keep our retail up and running and producing lots of energy and resources. We have um, our social media presence of GSHOM. I hope you all have noticed. It's grown significantly. The Facebook page has 9,164 likes, and Mariella is scrolling through some examples of some pace, Facebook posts from the last years. Um, and so we did increase over 1,000 likes, and um, we also increased our follows. For Instagram, we started the year with 599 followers, and at the end of the year, we had 1,027. This is a significant growth, almost double. And some of our top performing posts from last year are displayed on the slides that you got to see. And continue following us. I invite you to share um, us and like us. If you don't already, share on your own Facebook page. And um, please talk about the impact that Girl Scouts is making in your girls' lives. Um, people don't know it. We're still under the shadow of a pretty thick glass ceiling, and people don't automatically think that we are more than cookies, crafts, and camping. So please, think, pull out your 15 outcomes and post a post on how girls become better problem solvers, decision makers, they inspire others, they make their community better. Just pick, a, pick an outcome and write about it. I also want to share that it was our it was our first year that we launched our own podcast. Uh, two seasons with 12 episodes launched last February. And then the second one over the summer, plus a little mini episode from the sing-along and two special episodes about Mackinac Island Honor Guard. So 27 total episodes, all with our amazing local volunteers and staff and parents. The most popular episodes are the Honor Guard, the episode one with me, so that's wonderful. <laughs> Ricard, <laughs> it's really true, Mariella typed it. <laughs> uh, Ricard Riddle, Renee Selvick, Sick, Mandy Orlando episodes were some of our most popular. Please listen, please um, download it so that you can listen and share it with people. If you don't know how to use a podcast, ask someone under um, 20, they'll help you. And we're gearing up for a new season to launch in the coming weeks. So if you are not um, downloaded into our podcast, please make that happen. And you can also, if you have ideas about great stories that you think the general public would like to hear, um, Email B. Smith, Brenna Smith, at gshom.org if you have a story or you'd like to, you know someone that would be great for the podcast. And our very own Kat Bilo from our marketing department, um, and I know Kat's on the telephone, does all of our graphics, so our communication and marketing um, uh, department, and I love that a girl thought this was a Girl Scout mermaid. <laughs> So we need more Girl Scout mermaids. 
I'm signing up to be a Girl Scout mermaid myself. <laughs> Some of the things that you saw, and I urge you to um, get out to camp. Um, it is open year round. These pictures are in the lovely, beautiful green summertime at Camp Marywood, where we got a grant from uh, Kalamazoo um, uh, Foundation to purchase implements so that we could do a lot more things at camp with our tractors. We also got a tractor donated. And then, um, so at Camp Marywood, we also had Pfizer volunteers build the steps down Stony Lodge. And they are beautiful. There's those fabulous volunteers who spent the day at Camp Marywood and built steps. There's, there are the steps. Get to camp, Stony Lodge is beautiful. And you know, when you go outside, you get more creative, you get more energy, you get healthier. We also had upgrades to tents at Camp Marywood and Camp of the Hills, and the girls love them. Look at those girls. Aren't they just magnificent? And to know that that's going to inherit the world that we won't see one day. We also have added air gun program at both Camp Marywood and Camp Linden. And you can see the girls love it. And it's very important that our girls learn safety and proper um, handling of guns so that they do feel safe and secure and not fearful. We also, and I want to give a big plug, um, this we did a renovation that we completed at the Barb Osterman cabin in Alma. And uh, the back porch got completed. This is a cabin that a lot of troops are not aware of. Um, it is it's right in a county park, and it's on the river. Uh, we have to take a little hike. You don't have a view of the river from the back porch, but it's a fabulous place. It is available on our website, on Web Reserve, and your troop needs to stay here because we have lots of vacancies, and we really did a major renovation, so I thank the rangers and our program officer, um, I mean our pro property officer, and um, the girls in Alma who inspired this by helping the fabulous Fund Development Department get um, donations to be able to completely brand new kitchen, new floor, new lighting, new walls, new doors, new windows, and a new back porch. And there is a bike trail that surrounds this so the girls can take their bikes. And it is a fabulous place to go camping. So look on Web Reserve, um, plan a stay there. It is lovely and it's not that far up north. Another celebration that we have this year is we launched Friends of Camp. Friends of Camp, um, they work on the properties, they build, they paint, they restore, they're, they're currently looking at um, the master plan for what's the long-range um, growth and development of our camps. They also are involved in fundraising raising projects that support our camps and that are really critical to the welfare and well-being of our camps. They communicate and advocate on behalf of the, of the properties and making sure that potential users um, know more about that particular camp, like what's available in every unit, um, and if people have questions, they have their own web, uh, Facebook pages so that people can learn more about each of our camps. And since thousands of our girls use Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan properties every year, um, and the staff does do a wonderful job ensuring that every single one has a safe, relaxing experience away from, from screens, and monitors and everyday worries, just enjoying themselves at camp. And the other thing that our friends do is they promote the benefits of the out of doors to our girls. So if you're not aware of the outstanding and amazing benefits of the out of doors to our girls, please reach out to a ranger, to a camp staff person, or anyone of our Girl Scout uh, staff and our GSHOM facilitators. If you would like to have someone come and talk about camp, please reach out to Matt Bates at mbates at gshom.org. And if you would also know someone that would like to join 
the friends. It, they have a lot of fun. And they do chainsawing and picking up and promoting and fundraising, and it, it's a way to keep our camps viable. And I will say our safety track record is really phenomenal. So I remind you, have your girls go outside. We launched Go Outside, Come Back Better. This will continue to be our theme uh, this year. So please send your girl or girls to summer camp where, where they learn confidence. And you can see confidence being built right here in this picture. Outdoor adventure, relaxation, a really critical chance to unplug and, and understand how important our environment is and how important it is to maintain our environment into the future, and how very importantly to learn how to keep and maintain friendships for a lifetime. That is something that very few organizations teach the way that Girl Scouts do. And Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan Camp is the single best opportunity for girls in Michigan and for all over the countryside to ditch their screens and get out to play. Go outside and come back better. Please, you can find us on girlscoutcamp.org or on our website and click camp. Look at the fun times that girls have. We have started archery um, education and archery series of achievement medals that the girls are going crazy over. So that's a little bit of the future we're going to be. We already have ramped up our archery program, so get involved. I do want to share um, that for 2020, our big priority is to continue to recruit girls and volunteer to grow memberships so more girls can have the benefit and advantage of Girl Scouting. It is to improve customer service. We're really going to strive to have um, the best customer service we can, so I invite you to let us know what we could do better. And we want to continue to elevate the bronze, silver, and gold award. And of course, many people don't realize that we are girl-led, and that's what makes us so very special. So we're going to continue to be girl-led and offer bolder programs. And you'll see from the source this year that our program department, led by um, uh, Karen McLatcher, and you can reach her if you have program ideas at kmclatcher at gshom. And then build our image as the experts on girls in the out of doors. And to also, no, I got cut off. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I got some track. And I want to remind you too that if you have uh, ideas on where, places we need to recruit girls to grow our business and give more girls the opportunity, please contact Connie Moore, our fabulous um, membership and adult education officer at Seymour, and it's not like Seymour, it's C-M-O-H-R at gshom.org. Please let Connie know how we can boldly offer Girl Scouting to more girls and grow our program. And I wanted to remind you, if any of you would like to share this PowerPoint that Mariella so beautifully has put together, we will make it available to you to share at your area meeting. And um, I want to remind you the advantage of, for girls of being a Girl Scout. It is time tested. We're more than 100 years old. We're research based. And we do use that research to offer programming that help girls take the lead in their own lives and to make the world a better place. It's an all-female environment, which is a real, real special safe place for girls where they can try new things, develop new skills, take on leadership roles, and just be themselves. Because when girls are in a single-sex learning environment, they perform better on achievement tests in every subject. They report higher career and educational aspirations. They're more likely to complete high school and um, higher ed. They report feeling having much more control over their lives, also called a high level of locus of control. They're more politically involved. 
more interested in growing and building and improving their community, are less likely to be unemployed, and they have a way more positive self-concept. So please share the word. I want to remind you that the more ways a girl participates in Girl Scouting, the more competencies and outcomes she gains. So please make sure that the girls that you touch in your daily life, that they participate in events, series, travel, camp, troops, and virtual. So girls are also developing podcasts. So that's an example. A series, a fabulous series that we're so proud of, one of the best in the nation is our cookie program. It's an entrepreneurial series. Events, of course, are play days at camp, um, different events in our beautiful source that our program team and I will um, also let you know that if you have ideas for programs, please reach out to Karen McLatcher at her email and her team will help do that. And then travel, of course, is what a lot of girls love, especially as they get older. So please encourage your girls to participate in all the pathways that are possible for Girl Scouting. And certainly, last but not least, I want to remind you that we're all just a phone call, an email, a text away, that our culture here in Girl Scouts is that we want to continually improve, and we love feedback. It is a gift. So please, let us know how we can help you help girls grow and gain those valuable skills that's going to make our entire globe better. Mariella, do we have questions now or feedback? There was a question about um, who could go to an area meeting to talk about gold, silver, bronze awards. So we can um, get in touch with the um, leader and uh, we will figure out information oh, yes. for sure. Our program team would love to talk about that. Our, um, they are amazing. And we can also find some past gold, silver, bronze uh, award uh, Girl Scouts to come and also talk to your girls. So you have a group of younger girls and they see a Gold Award girl coming, Girl Scout coming and talking to them. It is very inspiring. It's like, it actually, it, I, it, I get teary-eyed. So yes, thank you. That's a fabulous question. Know that we would love to come to a troop meeting, area meeting. Um, please let us know how we can share with your girls all the amazing resources that we have available for you and your families and your girls. Great question. So that would be Kay, Karen McLatcher, K, I call her K Mick. It gets confusing sometimes, but it's K McLatcher. But you could email any of us. Um, I also want to give a big shout out that at each of our offices, we have level three administrative assistants at each of our offices who are amazingly talented and you can reach out to any of them and I will share their names right now. You can see um, D. Lloyd, so that's D. Lloyd at GSHOM is in Lansing and could help you with any question that you had and direct it to a person that could get you help. In Kalamazoo, it's L. Smith, Laura Smith, most of you that um, have reached out to your regions will know these people as some of the most helpful humans on the face of the earth. In, um, in, in Jackson, we have Lance Kern. So it's L. Kern at GSHOM. And in Saginaw, Aaron Tunney, so you'll see that Mariella is putting the names up there, and in Ipsy Ann Arbor, we have Donna. So reach out to them. The other thing I want to remind and I want to give a shout out to our fabulous managers of our help desk and our registration folks. Uh, Deanna and Trudy are also happy to help, and they oversee the help desk. I cannot encourage you enough. If you have a Girl Scout question and you don't know who to ask, 
reach out to our help desk. And you can find that um, email and phone number that Mariella is going to type on the stage for everybody. It's help desk at gshom.org. And if you've met our help desk people, they are also some of the most well-informed and kind people on the planet. Use our help desk. No one should be uh, without an answer to the question that we want you to have all the resources so you can do great things for girls, so girls in turn can do great things in the world. Other questions, comments? So here's a picture of some of our marvelous staff. There's Connie Moore. This is at a staff retreat at beautiful, beautiful Hunter Lodge at Camp Linden. If you haven't been there, you need to go. Not sure who that crazy looking lady is. We were talking about goals and objectives and um, building our business growth strategy for the year. We are quite strategic and tactical. Part of what you don't see on a regular basis is all the goals and objectives and uh, indicators that we use to see that we're growing and progressing and challenging and keeping up with real trends. And then you can see, of course, our fabulous camp staff, Audrey, our camp director from Camp Lind, and then, of course, Brad is our camp director at Marywood. We do have fun in Girl Scouts. And there's the back. Notice that Mariella put a picture of herself with the back of her head in. I thought I would point that out, but some of our staff doing some fun songs and games at camp during our retreat. And I want to tell you that we have some of the most passionate, dedicated, caring humans um, on our staff that are here to help you. So please get to know them. Um, build a relationship with them. We want to get to know you. More of our amazing, fabulous staff that go to work every day trying to make the world a better place. And this is a very recent picture. And in this picture, you can see um, our program team and our cookie team. And in the pink is Kay Mick, our product program officer. And in the middle is Deanna. And she's our retail manager. And then we do have um, Stacy, Leanne, Angela, and I don't have my glasses on. And Kate. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Um, so please reach out to us. We are more than eager to help you make a better experience for girls. And what it's all about is us having fun and the girls realizing that they're having fun and making, making new friends so they can become extraordinary, but they don't know all the hard-wired machinery behind that. They're just there to have fun, make friends, and enjoy the adventures. And we help all of us together, volunteers, parents, troop leaders, area managers, facilitators, trainers, product managers, staff, all to make girls um, better than they could imagine themselves being. Thank you for everything that you do to make Girl Scouting, Girl Scout Heart of Michigan, a fabulous experience for girls and volunteers. And let us know ways that we can continue to grow and be more helpful to make your experience in Girl Scouting even better. Thank you so much. And I would be glad to answer any questions. Any new comments or questions? We'll give everybody a minute to type. All right. Okay. All right. Yes, because heaven knows I'm not a very fast typer, so <laughs> I can appreciate that. This webinar is being recorded too, and it will be posted in our website soon. So if you are not able to take some notes or you want to refresh on them or you want to show um, um, some other volunteers at a meeting, then uh, it'll be up in our website very soon. And you can share it, you can send it. Um, so please share it. If there are snippets that you'd like to share 
with your girls. Please um, have some fun out there and send our marketing and communications department pictures and comments and successes. We will pay, post them on Facebook. We are um, have some serious lookers, and um, thank you for asking and being involved. What I want you all to do is know that we are still open and doing business, and so please visit our retail stores there. Sales have gone down a little bit, because I do think people think that we've already moved. Um, so we are have the Ipsy office up for sale, um, and as explained in some of our um, communications to you, the the value of property in Ipsy has skyrocketed and because we are right on the expressway clover leaf, the value of it has really skyrocketed. We are in the process of looking for a new place. We will try to have a transition location should we sell the Ipsy office um, so that we will have barely uninterrupted service for volunteers and family and girls. We might be down to move a few days, but know that our property team is looking to find a place where we can have a temporary location until we find an, a new home. So we're in the process of looking so we can have a pretty clean transition. And we will use the proceeds from that um, increase in the market value of the property to um, really supply programs and to rebuild or relocate to a new office in Ipsy, Ann Arbor, and we should have money left over. So it will build our reserves. Can you repeat the question? Um, oh, question? no one saw the question was what's the status of the sale of the Ipsy Ann Arbor office? So we have some serious lookers. Other questions? Oh, everybody's happy they're going to be called trainers again. Me too. Facilitators is a mouthful. Just when I got used to saying that. If you do have troops of girls, I know our marketing department has gone out to meet with girls to talk with them about how to talk to local media about the impact that Girl Scouting has had on their lives. And uh, we are also happy to do that. If you have a real need, just we might not have thought about it yet, so reach out to us and ask us how we can help and we probably will find a way to make it happen. We have a lot of amazing volunteers that are also skilled that can help as well. And then thank you to the lovely person who thanked us for everything that we do. We love what we do because you are such special people. You know, I'm sitting in the room with some volunteers that when I walked in the room, you could just feel the love. And uh, it's a great feeling to be able to work with people, both staff and volunteers, who care so much about girls. And we have the common value and um, bond of the promise and law. Thank you so much. Other questions, comments? Thanks for taking time out of your busy life to be with us and to help girls become better than they might imagine themselves. Mariella, unless there are more questions, is there anything else? There's no questions now. I think the, um, the information about Ipsy was quiet. That's what I, the feedback I'm receiving. Oh. So if maybe you could summarize or repeat part of that. All right. So we have some very interested lookers in the Ipsy building because we're in a prime location um, near the interstate. But with uh, Google Maps, we know that volunteers don't necessarily need to find us right next to the interstate. So we're able to see some appreciated property values there. We are currently looking for a transition location, so we will have minorly interrupted service. We will have a skeleton crew there or a full crew, but we will have a full retail store. So please continue to shop local. 
Um, we are not moving yet. I think we're, you know, somewhere between three to six months, maybe, but that's a guess right now. But please continue to come in and be with your staff and, and learn uh, what's happening at the IPSI office. Connie, you wanted to ask a question to everybody. Oh, Connie, I would love to open the mic to our esteemed chief officers. Um, and Connie wants to ask a question. I can ask the question. Connie, are you unmuting? What Connie would like to ask is, um, what would volunteers like to see as a spring renewal incentive? What would be significant and meaningful to you for a spring renewal incentive? That if your girls register early, your troops register early, what kind of incentive would be exciting and inspiring for girls to register? We know that if girls and troops re-register in the spring, it makes it so much easier. Um, new troops um, can also register. Um, but it allows you to get new leaders for your existing troops to get additional education over the summer. Connie? You can have girls also. Can you hear me, Jan? Jan? You're perfect. Yes, perfect. Go, Connie. So another thing is if you want to ask your girls um, and uh, if they have any ideas or other volunteers, uh, make sure to just email me at cmohr at gshom.org. Um, we'd love to have a lot of input um, and make sure that uh, the reward matches the, the folks that are participating. So I'd appreciate it. Thank you. We'd appreciate it, not just me. We'd love to give your feedback, so, and we'd love to offer an incentive for spring renewal to um, exactly what girls are asking for. So thank you, Connie, that's brilliant. We are girl-led. This is another example of that. Ask your girls and let us know. Please email Connie. Any other questions? Somebody put um, travel cups, coffee style for leaders, and water or smoothie for girls. Oh, so travel cups. Mm -hmm. Any other chief officers like to um, share anything I might have omitted? Okay, Mick, do you have anything you'd like to share? I'll take I'll take silence as no, but if you'd like to. I'm, I'm good, you. thank you. I, I'm okay, good, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. I want to I want to end with one story that is quite meaningful and a real example of uh, how we believe in continuous improvement. Two years ago at a kickoff in Lansing, there was an amazing leader, I hope she's on the call tonight, Liberty, who um, was just wonderful watching her with her daughters. And one of her daughters had less than a stellar experience at camp and she had a great idea. And the reason she um, spoke to me, she came up to me directly, she shared her idea she went to camp, but the unit at the time was divided by, um, by themes. And so the girls would vote and then the entire unit would do those activities. That girl's idea, and she's, when I realized that she couldn't do what she most wanted to do because she was the minority voter in her unit, is the reason that our fabulous camp staff and um, redid camp so girls get to pick their activity every day. So a fabulous example of a girl and a mom who coached a girl to be brave enough to come and tell the CEO about her experience 
and to say that it wasn't so great and how we use that feedback to completely revamp camp. So, and I know Liberty is a co area manager in DeWitt. So I want to give a special thanks, scout a shout out to um, her daughters for talking to me about their camp experience, which inspired the entire idea to reorganize how the girls' experience is at camp. And just, a, just an example of the kind of ways that we make things happen um, according to your voice. So thank you, Connie, for asking for feedback. Please give us feedback. We'd love to do what you most would like and enjoy for spring renewal and any other ideas that you have. If there are no more questions, I will um, tell everyone good night. We'll pause for a couple minutes to make sure. Thank you, Jenny, Emily, Katie, Krista, for asking wonderful questions. Remember that the Gold Award is the mark of the truly remarkable. The Girl Scout Gold Award. So if you can reuse that tagline, the Girl Scout Gold Award is the mark of the truly remarkable. Thank you, Sarah, for that. I can't thank you all enough, and I hope you have a wonderful evening and continue to have a fabulous Girl Scout adventure that is extraordinary and fun. Good night. And goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye.